And Clomiphene versus HCG. Both boost endogenous testosterone, both stimulate the HPTA axis, our body's primary testosterone generating machinery. So which is better? This is a common question I receive. If you've been following the Natty Plus protocol, you know that I personally am a bigger fan of Enclomiphene. But Valley XO says HCG is king and that you shouldn't listen to me. So am I biased? I mean, did I simply have a superior subjective experience with Enclomiphene and now espouse Enclomiphene to be inherently superior? Well, although I did experiment with both and yes, I did respond better to Enclomiphene, there's actually one objective pharmacological reason why there's no doubt in my mind that enclomiphene has more long-term testosterone boosting utility, which I will elucidate soon. But first, what are these things anyway? Okay, so enclomiphene, it's a CIRM, selective estrogen receptor modulator. It competes with the estrogen receptors in the brain. Your brain thinks estrogen is low and compensates by releasing more hormone precursors, which increases testosterone downstream. HCG stands for human chorionic gonadotropin. It's a hormone primarily produced during pregnancy by the placenta. But of course you can take exogenous HCG and it mimics LH, luteinizing hormone, which is one of those hormone precursors that enclomiphene stimulates. Accordingly, HCG also increases testosterone downstream. Personally, I experimented with HCG for 10 days, 1000 IU every third day. It did boost my testosterone fairly rapidly. My testosterone increased from 640 nanograms per deciliter to 870. Now I was able to achieve higher testosterone with just a low dose of enclomiphene. Just 6.25 milligrams daily allowed me to achieve 1,120 nanograms per deciliter testosterone. But you could speculate that I could achieve those levels with a higher dosage or longer duration of HCG. Personally, that's not an experiment that I wish to pursue. I felt terrible on HCG. I was lethargic, I had brain fog, it wasn't a pleasant experience. Why? I don't know for sure, was it the disproportionate estrogen modulation relative to testosterone, possibly? But everyone's different. I guarantee you there's individuals out there who feel great on HCG. And there are also people who are extra sensitive to the mood side effects on enclomiphene. So from a subjective experiential standpoint, whether someone feels better on enclomiphene or HCG, it comes down to individual variability. It's an experiment you'd have to run on yourself. but. Even if you feel great on HCG, it can come with a cost. But before I totally destroy HCG users' dreams, I will recognize that it has a place. For example, it's absolutely magical when it comes to fertility. In fact, it significantly increases your chance of having a whole litter of humans. So if you're looking to land a reality TV show, or you're just so confident in your current epigenetic configuration that you want to produce quadruplets, then there's no better compound than HCG. But if you're looking to enhance your endogenous testosterone production long term, then HCG, it just isn't the play. Why? Because in the long run, it's going to suppress LH. Remember, HCG essentially acts as exogenous LH. It stimulates the LH receptor. It is considered an LH mimetic. So just as injecting exogenous testosterone sends a signal to down-regulate endogenous testosterone production, injecting exogenous HCG sends a signal to down-regulate endogenous LH production. So HCG is still suppressive of the HPTA axis, it just suppresses a smaller, more specific part of it rather than the entire system like exogenous testosterone would. So if you utilize HCG long-term and then come off, there's a good chance your testosterone will drop below baseline because you suppressed a fundamental testosterone precursor, LH, luteinizing hormone. Now, enclomiphene starts looking pretty magical by comparison because it doesn't work that way. It doesn't suppress anything. I'll pop up a picture of the HPTA axis. So anytime you artificially enhance any of these nodes with an exogenous compound, some part of the system will downregulate in an attempt to reach equilibrium. And clomiphene doesn't act directly in this system like HCG. It acts on the periphery. It sends a signal right here, and it's a low hormone signal. This signal upregulates this entire hormonal system, which means more gonadotropin releasing hormone, more LH, more FSH, and finally, more testosterone. If you discontinue in clomiphene, this signal is removed and you simply return to baseline or remain slightly above baseline. Nothing essential seems to be downregulated. There doesn't appear to be any sort of tolerance buildup. And the clomiphene studies support this. So clomiphene is enclomiphene and zooclomiphene. Unfortunately, there aren't any long-term isolated enclomiphene studies yet. So 
Hormone levels remain fairly constant even years after taking clomiphene, and this is why people are implementing enclomiphene long-term as a substitute for TRT. So this is personally why I prefer enclomiphene. Please let me know your experiences with either HCG or enclomiphene in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.